Testing, testing, JB here, JB here. Hope everyone's doing outstanding. July 3rd, 2024. Talk really quick about the markets. Some of the names I traded yesterday, some names I'm looking at go from there. Uh, the markets are closed at one o'clock today. So just uh, be aware of that. Also markets closed tomorrow for the July 4th holiday. But we are coming into today, all-time highs on, uh, all-time high closes on the S&P and the NASDAQ. Not much really in the way of catalysts yesterday outside of Powell's comments which I guess were construed somewhat dovish. And then you had the jolts report at 10 o'clock. Um, markets open lower than just reversed course and it just melted higher for the rest of the day in a somewhat quiet session, which was, uh, I guess, in stark contrast of the, of the previous session. So we'll see what happens here today. 550 is probably a foregone conclusion on the SPY. We'd love to see that close uh, above that handle in um, by Friday will be great. And then next week starts the kickoff of the earnings season. So I believe it's the 12th is the banks. And then the following week starts some of the names with Netflix, so on and so forth. So 543 held like a champ. I think it was eight sessions in a row. It came close or, or, or was below it at some point during the, uh, during the session before bouncing. So that continues to be strong support uh, on the way down. So if we do get some sellers, definitely watch in that area. And then 550, I think, is a key spot. And then uh, also of note, and I keep talking about these small caps, the IWM, what does it do? It closes right near that 50-day moving average. Can't, can't close above it. Closes right below it. This morning, small caps are actually in the green right now with uh, S&P and NASDAQ futures a little bit in the red. So good sign here if those can outperform finally. That's something I'm waiting for. Once that happens, I think could provide the next leg for markets. Put a little wind in the sails of some of these names that have underperform because if you take a look at the basket of stocks that have really propelled the market it's it's the mega cap names the big cap names and a lot of these small cap names have been not participating so once those start to participate i think that could offer the next leg to markets all right so really quick some of the names so first uh national beverage fizz finally closed the last couple of my strikes yesterday for i think it was like 400 percent or so uh, up four days in a row since its earnings probably heads to 55 if not higher but it's such a illiquid name i didn't want to be in a situation where there's a downgrade and then the next day the stock opens at 50 bucks or down 10 percent or, or something crazy like that so i'll uh, i'd rather lock the profits in take some of the risk off i have a lot of different positions open so sometimes it's important to, to take some of that risk off just in case we do get some kind of some some kind of pullback it'll happen at some point um and probably not a name i'm going to revisit uh you know i'm not saying it it doesn't like i said could be 55 plus, but the conviction, I don't know if I have a, a strong conviction. So that's why I closed those, that, that, uh, that position. Roku, th this I have conviction in. So Roku ended its eight session winning streak. Looked like it was going to try and make it nine yesterday, but just couldn't find enough buyers. Uh, locked the last of my July strikes in for some nice gains. I, again, similar, uh, well, at least what I've been saying for Roku for, for some time, I, I think it's 65 plus in, in the coming days and then 70 in the, in the coming weeks. There's plenty of gaps to fill on the way up. It's one of those names that have kind of been left for dead. So especially if small small caps start to rally, I think that'll bode well for, for Roku. Uh, still have the, some August strikes. I, I locked some of those in as well to cover costs. Um, if a Roku starts to really get going again, I don't know if it's going to do it today, but maybe Friday or Monday. I, I'll look for some more strikes, possibly some more July strikes. Um, just didn't want to, I just want to be, a, a, again, situation where there's a downgrade or something crazy and the premiums come out of the July strike. So I want to lock those profits in. So that's Roku. A uni universal display, another upgrade this morning. This time it's Oppenheimer. They raised their price target to two, is it uh, 250 from 200? Yesterday it was Needham. They were, raised their price target to 242 from 198. Those 230 strikes look pretty attractive on a risk reward basis. So don't be surprised if you see me add those strikes at the open or uh, somewhere a little later in the open. I, I've talked about it last week, this refresh cycle. It's the big buzzword in regards to AI and phones that are capable of, of powering AI and all this other BS. I don't, I shouldn't call it BS, but just these buzzwords. And Universal Display certainly is one of those companies that's, that should be, uh, it should be a, a huge tailwind for them. So uh, 255, I think the all time high from a couple of years back, not saying that that's where it, it needs to go. But I think if you look at all the, the, the backdrop of the entire sector and, and things like that, it's, it certainly has an opportunity to, to, to head up at least to into the 230. So, uh, also you take a look since the start of June, it's rallied from 175 and then it's kind of consolidated. So you can kind of, 
you can call it a bull flag and i'll see if i can post this in the chat room so you, you take the, the 175 and then you take it uh the two 215 i think it hits so so you're talking a uh, you know a 40 40 dollar move you divide that by two that's how i do my bull flags and then you add 20 bucks that gives you a, a 232 dollar 233 dollar price target at least in the short term on a bull flag breakout so potential bull flag then on universal universal display oled's the ticker uh don't be surprised to see me add some calls there also added square strikes yesterday so uh, a square once it breaks 65 and a 200 day moving average is 65.12 i mentioned on the watch list yesterday i was going to add some strikes i was looking at at you know july's august some some strikes that offered i thought the best risk reward and then i looked i'm like the 7250s which i already added a, a couple weeks ago look like the best kind of risk best uh, option on a risk reward basis so i went and got those strikes got my average down once that breaks 65 and holds i think it's 70 75 it, 67 74 is the two uh the 50-day moving average yeah also had i guess some of the catalyst was paypal getting upgraded yesterday i mean that stock's been just destroyed as well so i think once those start to get going you know i've always said this with with square and some of these other names th that the transactional sector as a whole where there's uh, the the the, the middleman right the, the party that that takes a cut of all the transactions that has to be disrupted at some point square is certainly a name that continues to benefit not only that the cryptocurrency side so that's square chewy i also added calls it's a name i was looking to add some strikes uh, the last couple days uh, once the dust settles with this and i post on fintwit yesterday i think there's a lot of jealousy with warren kitty everybody's they all want to it's it's like uh folks who who get mad at billionaires right someone who Maybe they came to the country with no money and they made themselves into a billionaire. All these people are jealous of them, right? They, oh, he should pay 50% taxes on his profits, right? Uh, and maybe I'm not going to make the argument either way, but it seemed, you know, people look at that and they have a sense of jealousy. And I think they have the same with Warren Kitty. I mean, here's someone who had a, a bull case on, on GameStop and was able to turn it into a very profitable position. So because of that, people are, are jealous of his position as being able to, to move stocks now, right? And if you look at it, it's kind of comical because not only do hedge funds with their 13F filings move stocks, but you have analysts move stocks. When analysts do an upgrade, typically the stock moves to the upside. So is that, should they be under investigation? I'm sure their clients are probably in position. So, uh, I mean, they have disclosures and, oh yeah, we're in this and what, you know, they, everything's transparent, but it just kind of comical. So. I st I thought uh, Chewy was thirty five forty without all this backdrop and all the the possible catalyst. So with this, I think it just it, you know expedites the move to thirty five forty. I mean, it was thirty nine bucks after it's after Roaring Kitty came out with that tweet. Uh, so dust settles. Uh, I'm not going to add any more strikes, but I'll uh, continue to hold. I you know have the August forty uh, fives as well and January seventies, which premiums are still kind of holding up there. So I think that's a good sign. So that's Chewy. Uh, I also added some Reddit spec calls uh, yesterday, start breaking out to, to all-time highs. I talked about these smash-ups and IPO smash-ups are one of those kind of uh, setups that happen where these names that IPO, they churn for a bit, and then all of a sudden the market, just they just take off because the market's trying to find a valuation for the company, and typically it overshoots to the upside. And there's been many of these examples over the days. I use Roku as a good example. I mean, stock was 18 bucks, went up to, to 55, 60 in a matter of a, a week or two. Uh, Shake Shack, um, Tilray was a name. I think it went all the way up to 100 and, 150 or something like that. So there's a lot of these examples. Uh, so, you know, Reddit probably i mean if you catch this fire today that's great i think it trades up in, into the 80s into friday if not i'll use 70 as a stop to salvage my my calls uh wing stop i added some inexpensive i wouldn't say inexpensive but i got some hedge puts and you know the market the spy was at under 543 at the open so i was i just wanted to have a uh, didn't want to be in a situation where i get caught with my pants down um and not only that, the, whole, the entire casual dining sector as a whole is just getting destroyed. You look at McDonald's, you look at uh, Chipotle, Shake Shack, Young Brands, DRI, um, uh, Brinkers, whatever, however you pronounce it. <laughs> uh, all these names are just getting destroyed over the Domino's Pizza, uh, last three to five sessions, just getting pummeled. And then Wingstop is standing. <laughs> it's like the last man standing. It, it, it seems like it hasn't succumbed to any pressure despite the stock was at $240 to start the year. That just because it went from 240 to 420 doesn't mean it, it, it needs to sell off. But I think there's an opportunity, especially if the continuation in these 
uh, you know, the theme and selling off casual dining names continues. You have to think at some point, uh, cracks start to show in, in Wingstop and it, and it pulls back. 50 day moving average is 290. Is it 293? Uh, excuse me, 393. So that'd be a key spot if we do get some weakness. And I said it yesterday, it doesn't need to move to, to 380 or, or 370 for to pay big on the puts. It just needs a 2 3% pullback. My puts will, will pay nicely. So that's the thought process there. I thought I had Baidu on this slide here. I think I posted in a chat room. Let me see if I can put it up here. But uh, Baidu is a serious pincher. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think I had, I don't know why I don't have Celsius holdings on here either. But but take a look at Baidu. And, <laughs> you know, I always take a look at Baidu because I think it's uh, the the pre preeminent uh, AI name in China. And at some point, it should really start to reverse course. But that hasn't been the case. I think some of it is just a function of the overall China markets where baba and all these other names just really can't seem to find buyers maybe there's worries worries about delistings things like that uh and then there's been slower growth than expectations in china so i think some of that weighs as well but at some point you have to you look at pinchers and pinchers typically when you have the adx and the momentum indicator so close together that's called a pincher and once that reverses it precedes a tremendous breakout to the upside typically 10 15 percent at minimum so i hate to go chasing baidu or at least uh not chasing, trying to catch the falling knife on, knife on Baidu, but I have to think at some point that's going to start to break out. So definitely on watch. Uh, that's a crazy pincher. And then you look at Celsius Holdings, and Celsius Holdings has a possible pincher here. It just needs to reverse. So uh, maybe today's the day. Let's see if I can put it on my charts. Should be able to do it. Yeah, there's Celsius Holdings. Last, uh, what is it, two, two of the last three sessions to the downside, some consolidation. Hopefully it heads uh, back over 60 either today or Friday. And that's it, folks. Let's have a great day. I'll try and I'll be back on audio before the close. And the close again is at one o'clock. Markets closed for uh, 4th of July tomorrow. Happy 4th of July for those uh, in the U.S. And then uh, back at it on Friday. Big jobs report on Friday. But I, I think some of you already had a weekly jobless claims. We have the Fed minutes tomorrow today at 2 o'clock after the close. And... Uh, yeah, that's it, folks. Let's have a great day. Rock and roll.